This is Calm AF, a podcast for humans who are hard on themselves. A podcast for the overthinkers, people pleasers, perfectionists, and overachievers. I'm Kristen Finch, and I'm going to teach you how to quiet that incessant negative chatter in your head. Because you know what a person with a calm mind can do? Anything they want. Grab your coffee, gorgeous soul, because today's the day you get Calm AF. Hi. Welcome back to Calm AF. Super happy that you're here. I'm excited to share today's topic. It's a really good one, as they all are. All right, let's dive in. Last week's episode was all about feeling your feelings. If you haven't listened to that episode, make sure you do, because feeling your feelings is the key. It's the secret sauce, the magic potion to creating transformation, especially quicker. Okay, It helps you get there quicker because the more you practice the skill of allowing any feeling, good, bad, and ugly, the more emotionally resilient you will become. And the more emotionally resilient you become, the more you trust yourself to be able to handle any feeling that shows up for you. And that will help you get the life you want. It's going to help you create what you want quicker, right? Because it's normal to feel nerves about having a hard conversation, making a big decision, taking a risk, doing something new, creating a new habit or deciding to change something in your life. It's totally normal to have nerves and to have anxiety and to feel a little apprehensive at times because your brain doesn't like the unknown. Of all the things the brain doesn't like, the unknown is like its least favorite (laughs) because it likes to try and predict. It likes to keep you safe. That really is all it comes down to, right? Um, So what many of you do when you are embarking on something new is you start feeling anxious about potentially feeling anxious. You start feeling nervous about potentially feeling sad or embarrassed or whatever. Something, If something doesn't work, however you're going to feel, your brain decides to start feeling anxious about that ahead of time. And that anxiety, that fear voice is so persuasive and incessant that you will shut down the thing that you wanted to try before you've even tried it. Because you're like, I just felt so bad thinking about the feeling. I don't even want to go there. I just rather stay where I am right now. If there's any potential risk of feeling an uncomfortable feeling, your brain is like, shut that shit down. Or the other thing that it does is it thinks like, "Mm, just keep thinking about it. Maybe if you keep thinking, then you will find the risk-free option, right? Which is why I always say overthinking is not critical thinking. It's an avoidance tactic. It knows there's not actually a risk-free option in life. Nothing that's unknown is risk-free. But your brain is really convincing. It's like, no, 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 no. You just keep thinking, sweetie, and you will find the risk-free option. And that's what keeps people stuck because there isn't one. If you want to change anything at all, you have got to be willing to feel discomfort. If you want to change how you feel in your life as a whole, If you want to leave a toxic job or a toxic relationship, if you want to find your person, if you want to feel better or calmer or more content or happier, listen up. You're going to have to choose growth. You're going to have to choose discomfort over comfort. My clients right now are up standing on their chairs yelling, yes, because they know they're doing it. Like, it sucks, and it's working, (laughs) right? A lot of times people like to tell me that it's just easier if they stay the same. It's just easier. Even though I feel exhausted, even though I feel resentful, it's just easier. But is it? Is it really? I say this to my client all the time. I'm thinking of one client in particular. Is it actually easier for you to feel exhausted and resentful all the time? (laughs) Putting yourself last isn't easier. It's just familiar. Your brain is familiar with exhaustion. Your brain is familiar with resentment and overwhelm. It just has some certainty. It knows what to expect because it's a familiar neural pathway. It's done it a million times. 
This is why you have to actively and purposefully and intentionally choose your growth over your comfort. You have to get comfortable feeling uncomfortable if you want to change anything. This reminds me of a client. I'm actually going to bring her on the podcast and interview her because she came to me. The transformation that she went through in six months was like, whoa. She came to me six months ago, almost in a constant state of anxiety. She was in a relationship that she knew wasn't right. She knew she couldn't be in it anymore, but she was terrified of leaving because it was familiar. And she'd actually tried to leave before, but she just kept coming back because her brain was like, yeah, it sucks that you can't really trust him. And it sucks that he's not very respectful of you, but you're fine. It's easier than feeling the pain. It's easier than having a hard conversation or feeling sad. Right. And I told her, listen, you're not none of this is going to be easy. What you are about to do, because she came to me knowing She came to me not confused. She's like, I know I have to do this. I just can't seem to make myself do it. And so I said, listen, none of it's going to be easy. It's going to feel really bad. Sometimes you're going to feel awful. But you're going to need to do this in order to feel better, in order to really love your life again. I'm going to ask you to keep choosing your growth, keep choosing to feel uncomfortable and scared and sad. I'm going to keep asking you to choose that over your comfort. And God bless her, she did it. She learned to trust herself to be able to handle the discomfort because she kept saying yes to it. She's like, yep, this is going to suck. And I'm saying yes to it. She did the scary hard things. She had the hard conversations. She set boundaries. She repeatedly had to reinforce those boundaries. And she did it because she knew that's what was required of the life that she was creating, of the future that she wanted. Choosing your growth is choosing your future. Choosing your growth is choosing the reality you want to create over the reality that you are in now. Choosing your growth over comfort is choosing you. And now here's the thing. (laughs) Here's the thing about choosing growth over comfort. Your brain will not be on board with it. It's not going to be like, yeah, let's do this. Let's feel lots of pain. Let's be terrified. Let's feel anxious. Let's feel grief. Your brain is not going to be moving towards that. You have to choose it. So you've got to know going in, this is what I told my client. You're about to do this. You got to know going in, your brain's going to fight you on it. Because your brain's designed to be efficient. Once you've established a pattern or a habit, your brain will always, always, always want to stay there. Even when you know the pattern of the habit is something that you don't want anymore. It's something that you want to change. So if you're heading into a change or a transformation in your life, and I'm being a little dramatic right? Because not everything is like, oh my God, it's horrible. But if you are going into a situation where you want to change something, you have to know going into it, your brain is going to fight any discomfort that shows up. Your brain is going to serve you up plenty of reasons why you should just stay the same and not rock the boat. Here are the things your brain's going to likely serve you. First, it's going to serve you up fear of what other people think. Choosing growth often requires you to stop doing things the way you've always done them. My hunch is that there are likely a lot of people in your life that are very accustomed to you doing things for them, to you putting their needs before yours, right? They might not like it. That's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to have to know that. Your brain's going to serve that up. Oh, he's not going to like this. They're not going to approve of this. They're not going to support you. Or you're going to be like, people are going to think bad things about you if you try this thing and you fail. If you like put yourself out there and you still don't find your person. If you quit your job to start your business and it takes longer than you think. People are going to have thoughts, right? So your brain's going to be like, "Mm, you better not. You better just stick to how things are now. Even though you don't like it, at least it's familiar. Your brain is also going to present you with imposter syndrome, Who are you to think you can change? You can't do it. This is what you always do. You say you want to do something and you start and then you quit. You can't change, honey. It's cute that you think you can, but no, no. 
And if those things don't work, if these things that your your brain is serving up to stop you from moving towards your growth, if those don't work, it's going to go straight catastrophic on you. (laughs) This is not safe. Oh my God, don't do it. If you do this scary thing, everything's going to fall apart. People will see you're not who they think you are. People will see you're not perfect. Oh my God, people are going to see you fail. And then they'll really know that you aren't perfect. This image that you've put out there, they're going to see right through it. You're going to be embarrassed. You're going to be humiliated. People will reject you. You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your family. And you're going to be alone and full of shame the rest of your life. (laughs) That sounds funny, right? But listen, I work with a lot of people that things like this come up and they go all catastrophic on it. Catastrophic thinking is just drama. You've got to think differently in order to move past this fear-based thinking. You've got to know ahead of time, this is what your brain's going to serve up in order to stop you. And you've got to know your why. Why, why am I going to deliberately and purposefully choose to move towards pain, to choose to move towards growth, to move towards doing this hard thing that's going to make me feel afraid and sad and scared? And your why is because it's your Oh, I must said it because it's your life. <laughs> I must drop the big one. You're going to do it because it's your life. And your brain is just doing what it does, trying to protect you, trying to keep you safe, trying to keep you in your comfort zone. But feeling stuck, resentful, overwhelmed, bored, it's not actually comfortable, is it? Oh, that feels kind of shitty too. This is your life. Deliberately choosing growth and feeling uncomfortable is worth it. My client that chose growth over and over, it was hard. She cried a lot. She reached out many times in a bit of a panic. Oh my God, I'm so scared. I'm about to do this thing. I'm I'm terrified. Or I'm so sad. I can't stop crying. Yes, it's normal. It's okay. It's just a feeling. She just needed me to remind her that it was normal. Yes, I know I'm here. I hear you. I see you. I feel you. It's so hard. What you're doing is so hard. This part feels awful. It sucks. You're going to be okay, though. It's worth it. Keep going. And she did. Last week was one of our last sessions. We have, I think, two more sessions. And we chatted about what's happened in the last six months because she has deliberately chosen growth over comfort. She ended her toxic relationship. She set boundaries in that and in so many areas of her life, sometimes again and again, because not everyone is allowed, not everyone followed through on her boundary the first time. She decided to move across the country, even though the realtor was like, Yeah, what you're looking for is a unicorn. We're not going to find that. Don't get your hopes up. She just decided to get her hopes up. And the next day, the realtor is like, oh, my God, I found it. It's exactly what you want. And a few hours later, it was hers. She's going to move there into her dream place. Money is showing up for her in ways it's never showed up in her life. She's choosing to fill her days with what fills her up. And she keeps choosing to say the hard thing and choose her future over her comfort And oh my God, the future that she is creating before her eyes is amazing. And when she's ready for a relationship, she knows exactly how she's going to do that too. She's going to deliberately choose growth. It's amazing how this works. When you choose your growth over your comfort, it's going to be hard, but it's always worth it. And I want to share one more incredibly important thing before I go, and that is this. Choosing discomfort is going to require you to do things that are out of your comfort zone, to tap into courage. And for some reason, a lot of y'all think that means you have to be hard on yourselves because your brain thinks since it's going to choose fear, like that's what I told you, you can expect that's going to happen, that fear and imposter syndrome and catastrophic thinking that's going to show up, that that means you're going to have to show up like a tyrant in order to get it to do what you want it to do. Like you're thinking, all right, big shot, you're choosing your future. And that means you're going to be uncomfortable. All right, 
You're going to try to run. You're going to try to quit. You got to be vigilant. You must not fail at this. No, 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 no. You are already doing a hard thing by asking your brain to deliberately choose to feel uncomfortable. Let's not make it harder, right? Remember at the beginning, let's not put anxiety on top of anxiety. Let's approach this like you would guide someone you love through it. You would choose compassion. You would be so kind. If your child or your partner or your friend was doing something difficult, making some big change, and they were having to go through some hard stuff, you would support them lovingly. You wouldn't yell at them. You wouldn't make them feel bad about themselves when they were struggling or when they were like, oh, I want to quit. You wouldn't be like, get off your... No, you'd be like... You're doing a hard thing. It's hard. I'm so proud of you. Yes, it's hard, love, but it's worth it. I'm here for you. It's normal to be afraid. Of course you're afraid. Of course you want to quit. It's okay. Nothing's gone wrong. I got you. That's how you're going to show up for yourself here. You're going to have your own back. You're going to remind yourself why you are doing it, why you are willing to feel uncomfortable. And you're going to walk into the fear, into the discomfort, because you know if you don't, nothing really changes. And this is your life. This is the one life you get here. And you're going to choose your growth over comfort. You're going to choose the life you are meant to live. Thanks for listening. And before you go, one more thing. So as you know, I am slightly obsessed with helping as many humans tap into their calm AF-ness as possible. So if this podcast has helped you, would you please leave a review, make sure you're subscribed and share it with your friends. Also, make sure you head on over to kristenfinch.com to see how you can work with me. You can sign up for my emails and get any other goodies I have available. Until next week, I love you so much. I am so grateful that you're here. I'll see you next time.